What's up, family? My name is Elijah Ami, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a grown folk channel. This is where we have heart-to-heart -heart conversations and keep it real. Here on this channel, everybody matters. Everybody's family. Here on this channel, we express love because at our core, we are love. I love you guys, and thank you for being with me on this beautiful journey called life. Peace. Okay. What's up, family? Man, we have a special guest today, Truth Coach Randy. We have Mental Pain Healer, Sherry Hill. We have Balanced Wellness with Shana. Family, we're going to talk about relationships. And before we get started on that, I want to share a quick story. Talking about Cinderella. This is, uh, I remember my kids, my daughters watching this cartoon. And this cartoon would piss me off. And I never really understood why watching this cartoon made me so mad. And as I sat back and I watched my daughter and she was prancing around trying to act like a princess, it made sense. And in the movie, Cart um, Cinderella, Cinderella, moms dies, her dad dies. Um, before he dies, he married this other lady and she has kids and they don't like Cinderella at all. They dog her out. And then when the father dies, they really mistreat Cinderella. Cinderella was off talking to rats and birds. So Cinderella got a lot of issues. She's twisted in the head, okay? Nobody likes her. She has low self-esteem, just on one, okay? And so you guys know the story of Cinderella. She goes off because she has on these glass slippers. She meets this prince who also has issues. You know, he has all this money and all these women that throw themselves at him. He wants love. He has issues. He has insecurities. And so these two... According to the movie, they live happily ever after. And that would piss me off because there's no psychological way that two damaged people can come together and live happily ever after like that. And they didn't talk about the real story behind what was going on with both individuals. And so hopefully that's what we're going to talk about today. Trauma bonding. Um, Sherry, would you like to get us going on that? Oh, wow. That's one of my um, favorite subjects. I deal in my practice with a lot of women who come from broken hearts, um, which is, I think, a way of us to heal, to be honest, because trauma uh, is how we can figure out when we trace our traumas. So that's what I call it is trauma tracing in my mm -hmm. practice, where we get the opportunity to go back into where our trauma first began, whether it was in childhood, teenage years, whatever. But we investigate you to find out where that trauma began. And that's where we go and fix you. Because we as children, we come into this world and we don't know nothing but love. But then we get introduced to these things called parents and they start introducing us to uh, low self-esteem, abandonment <laughs> issues. Sometimes it gets even worse and it turns into things like uh, abuse, molestation, and when you're a child, you have no idea how to deal with these things. So what we do is we suppress that trauma and we, we dig, we, we pack it deep down inside. And then we can start going on thinking that we've left that behind. When in fact, all we've done was gave it fertilizer to grow. That's all we've done. So when that happens is we go come to be adults and we're still operating in whatever age mindset where that trauma first began. So when we get in relationships, we're always, a trauma bond is when your trauma matches my trauma, okay? Somehow we come together, you, I, you got what my trauma needed, and I got what your trauma needed. But in those type of relationships, it's always extremely toxic, and they usually end up in divorce or separation, because no one, they, these type of people go into relationships expecting for someone else to make them happy. And that is impossible. We know that. Mm -hmm. Happiness starts within and it is a self-relationship first. You know, I always talk about what I see as a power couple nowadays because everybody thinks, oh, you know, Beyonce and Jay-Z, you know, Kanye and Kim. Look at the divorce rates on Kim's ass, especially. Okay, so <laughs> when I look at that, <laughs> I see a trauma bond. I mean, I see a power couple. as two people who trace their traumas and fell in love with themselves first because now you have become a candidate for a relationship because yeah. you have started that very most important relationship, which is that relationship with <laughs> self. Learn how to pamper yourself. Learn how to make love to yourself. Take yourself out. Do yeah. all the things so that when a person comes around, they are not a necessity, 
but an accessory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very nice. Yes. You just jump in wherever you want to, Brandy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll she, I mean, that's just so profound. And that's something that I mentioned the other day. We, we, and that we, we compare ourselves to people wanting so bad to live in this fantasy thinking that they have the perfect life and they are miserable in their households. They're miserable with their families. We have to start to look within ourselves and, and find that self-love. And I said, like for me, couple goals are, are people who are imperfect, who may have been trauma bonded, who grew up with narcissistic abusive parents and have lived their life that way for 30, 40 years. And they finally come to a realization, I can't live this way anymore. And they don't wanna lose that partner or they want to have that life mate. And they're able to look at themselves in the mirror and start to do the work and do, and it's not, people always try to do the work together. You have to do it alone. You have Absolutely. to be on your own and you have to stand in the mirror and be able to look at yourself and express the most, the deepest love and the deepest gratitude for who you are. And that is, that to me, that's couple roles. When two, two people come together and, they, and, and recognize their brokenness and heal from it and then affect change on the world. That to mm. me is couple goals. So I, I completely wholeheartedly back that up. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Coach yes. Randy? I don't think he heard you. Randy, is there something you want to add to this? Uh, his camera's off. So, yeah. you know, the, the trip is that while well, he's getting his camera together, I don't think the great majority of us realize that we have baggage. You know, mm -hmm. we've suppressed our baggage for so long that it becomes normal. You know, and this is just, oh, this is just who I am. And I've coped with it for so long. And I don't really have to do the work. I'm okay the way that I am. And Everybody just has to accept me the way that I am, you know, and it's like, man, that's so unhealthy. That's so toxic. That's so detrimental to anything that you're trying to do. Sherry? And, you know, and you know, what's crazy about that is that comes from, see, as a child, you are a victim. When these things are done to you as a child, you are a victim because you are an innocent child who's being manipulated by an adult. Yes. So that, in, in fact, you are a victim. But while you're still carrying that trauma around, you grow, you continue to play that, you've ascertained your place in the victim's club. Yes. And there is no winning in being a victim. You know what I'm saying? And so when you are a victim and you go into relationships that should have taught you better, you end up becoming a victim and you concentrate on what was wrong with the other person yes. rather than what you were supposed to learn from that, from that experience. Because any and everything that happens to us is there to is there to, to grow us. It's never to hurt us, it's to grow us. And I, that's what I see when I deal with these women who come to me and they're so brokenhearted and the first thing they wanna do is they want me to sit on the phone and listen to them have this pity party where they dog the man out. Oh my God, he did this to me, he did that to me. And then he ghosted me and he gaslit me and he left me for another girl and he got her pregnant while I was pregnant. And I hear this every single day. And then I stopped them after I listened to about 10 minutes for that pity party. I stopped them and say, okay, at what point are you going to accept the, all the red flags that you ignored? Okay, because there was red flag after red flag after red flag. And yet you continue to, you continue to go forth with this person expecting something different from what you were seeing from this person. We put on these rose-colored glasses when it comes to relationships, and especially as women. We swear to God, we can change somebody. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. We have, we, have, we have magic. And it's so funny when you talk about fantasy. There is a song, Mariah Carey, Sweet Fantasy. You yep. realize she never has a relationship with that man that she's talking about? She's exactly. like, image, images of rapture creep into me slowly. She, as you come into my head, it's, he never gives her anything. And she has this, this ode of love and respect for someone that has never given any reciprocity. And that's something that as women, we give so much. And, and like you said, deserve, we don't feel like we deserve that same love back. And so living in that state of fantasy and not reality, hope, but never the reality. Hope, oh, he's going, or she's going to go to therapy to get help for this, but never actual actual tangible reality, actionable changes towards progress and growth. And that's right. what that's what we need to see in, in healthy relationships. And right. I think it, I, it's so funny 
But I, I, the people that want to talk for hours about woe is me, the pity party, I, I understand where you're coming from, where you try to redirect them and you try to redirect them and they just keep on bringing up. They're stuck in that victim mentality yeah. and they yeah. need you and people like you to help them break out of it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that when you look at this cartoon, because this cartoon is so old, Cinderella is like old. And everybody in that movie wanted to be a princess. And I remember my daughter, she would be 32 this year. And everybody <laughs> wanted to be princesses as little kids. All the young girls wanted to be princesses. And now move forward, everybody's a queen. Everybody's a king. But everybody don't have king mentality. Everybody don't have queen mentality. But they got these titles that we give ourselves. Oh, I'm a boss. I'm a baller. I'm this, this, and that. But we've never dealt with the issues, the psychological issues in the first mm -hmm. place. You know what I mean? Right. And it's a trick mm -hmm. because um, Sherry and I, we talked about a lot about this. And I'm going to ask you, Greg, um, as young men, we're taught, men, when you fall down, get up, stop crying, stop whining. Man up. Men don't cry. Boys don't cry. Stop acting like a mm -hmm. punk. You're acting like a little sissy right now. But then when our daughters fall down, we pick them up, oh, baby, let me kiss your owie. Mm -hmm. We kissing them all day, owie, wherever they always at, we kissing. You know what I mean? And we holding them and hugging them. But our sons, man, stop acting like a punk. Honestly, you ain't believing. You hurt. You ain't hurt. You good. You good. And so our young boys grow up, and they're taught to suppress their emotions. Mm -hmm. And so they never know how. They never learn how to deal with their emotions except for rage, except for anger. And we deal with that on the football field, on the baseball field field on the basketball court now we can let all of our aggression out on these and it's accepted you know but when we get in relationships now that we're young men we've never learned how to do with our relationships our emotions now that we're 20s and 30s and we got this beautiful young lady and she's talking to us and now she's crying because she's going through some stuff she has some fears and insecurity and we ain't trying to hear all that because we think you manipulating us emotionally and so we just push you away because you're triggering us because we've never dealt with our issues. It's like going to a funeral. You don't even have to know the people there, but everybody's crying. You start feeling sad, it's like, man, I don't even know this dude, but I'm ready to cry <laughs> now. You know what I mean? And so that's what happens in our relationships when our women start crying. We don't want to get there. We don't want to go there because we have unhealed issues. And so we push them away. We start cussing them out, doing whatever we can just to get out the house. Would you like to add to that, Randy? Well, I just know um, for a while, I never knew how to hold because I was never held. Mm. How can you reciprocate something that you've never seen before? Yeah. Mm. And it wasn't until I had my daughters and I was holding them all the time and loving them. And then my wife was like, what about me? And I was like, what about you? <laughs> you know. And, and, but then I had to sit back and think about it. You know, if I'm going to raise them in a certain way, I also have to be an example to the ones that they're watching from the ones that they're watching. You know, you can't expect for them to get a man that's going to treat them right and do the things that you expect for them to do. If you're not giving them an example to follow. Yeah. So hard. I had to start being that guy and realize that, you know, I did want it. I just didn't get it, but I can start now. Yes. Getting everything that I did want from the person that's with me all the time. Yeah. And, 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 you know, more men need to realize, you know, I know I came up in the 70s and it was treat him tough so he doesn't become what he shouldn't become instead of realizing that he's going to come that because of you not yes. allowing them to have an emotional side. Mm. They oh deserve God. that emotional side so that they understand what emotions are. I didn't know what emotions were for a long time. I wow. was a very stoic individual. I didn't cry at a funeral until I was in my late, I take that back, into my early 30s. Oh, wow. Literally. And, and that's not a good thing No, at all. You know, I was already doesn't cry about anything. <laughs> but boy, when I cried, I didn't know why I was crying, but it wouldn't stop. Wow. And, and I've met many young men that way, and it's just not a it's not a thing. I mean, don't be afraid to let it out. It's healthy. It's yes, healthy. Yeah. It's cleansing. It's so cleansing 
physically and emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. It's so cleansing just to let it go. It's a spiritual bath. Yes, yes, yes. I, I do I do have a question, brother. And what about those? Because this is I'm a candidate for this. You go through life and you have these childhood traumas that aren't obvious. They're yeah, not they're, obvious. I didn't I really I thought that I was two two-parent home, very successful guy, an athletic, super smart guy. Didn't realize I was had went through trauma until I married this woman. And she asking me all the time, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I do everything for you. She said, you do everything for me, but it's something wrong. Yeah. Went back through my story and started to realize that the problem was I was a kid, firstborn, that they wanted perfection from. But they didn't want to listen to at the same time. That's kind of like, what? So I brought that into my marriage. <clears throat> I brought that into my marriage. I became the person that wanted to always bring this perfect solution yes. and figure out the process on my own. Worst problem I could ever have had because, you know, every argument I had for the first 18 years of my marriage was had the same root. Mm -hmm. Every argument had the yes. same root. Do you know how miserable that is to live Groundhog's Day in that type of environment? Yeah, it's, a, it's miserable. It's miserable. But it wasn't her. It was me. I was allowing my ego to get in the way. Mm, 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 mm. Had to be the man. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't work that way. Yeah. Not in a partnership. No. Not, not in a relationship. It doesn't work that way. No. But you know what Go sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you brought oh, no, something? no. I can go. I can go on and on on this. One, so you just better tell me to be quiet. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, I know yes. because I wanted to bring up something that you that you said you had a question. You, your question was how how do you know that you got trauma? Because like yeah, you yeah. said, a lot of people don't know that they have trauma. So mm -hmm. in my practice, I have this thing what we call trauma tracing. Okay, and I learned that because as we all know as coaches. When you become a coach, a healer, whatever, you are always your first client, always, because mm -hmm. you have to learn how to do this within yourself before you can go effectively do this for someone else. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that in 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 part of my uh, healing was started in a really bad relationship. Okay, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I noticed in my relationship was that I used to get upset, very very upset, triggered every time this person would stand me up. I'm talking about mad depression, closing the blinds, turning off all the lights. Just again, I'm depressed, mm -hmm. damn it. And that's the way it's going to be. And so <laughs> when I, I said to God one day, and this is how you figure out where your trauma is coming from. I said to God one day, why do I do this? This cannot be healthy. That every time a man stands me up, it's like the end of the world. That cannot be healthy. Where is that stemming from? I need to know. So God showed me. He took me back into my childhood and he showed me where when my mother and father got a divorce when I was 10, my father would call the house and have my mother get us dressed up for all of these excursions mm. and he would stand us up. And it would hurt us so bad every time he did it. So every time that, we, and what we do as, as adults is we go seeking relationships that will address our traumas. We don't even know <laughs> that we're doing that, but we do. Okay, we, so what I was doing was attracting men who would give me the same behavior that my father gave me because I was steadily trying to change that narrative, change what happened. And there was no way for me to do that. But I did, through my tracing of that trauma, have the opportunity to see that that was a problem. And then I was able to get rid of that. So that's one mm. of the best ways is where you, where you see repeated problems, especially. Yes. Go back and trace that and find out mm -hmm. where that came from in your childhood and you'll mm -hmm. figure it out. One of the examples that I use all the time in my practice is the um, uh, anime and uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, 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 the, 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 the singer, Tina Turner. And I, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. okay yeah. The perfect trauma bond, okay? The perfect trauma bond because what happened? Okay, in, in Tina Turner's young age, her mother got up and took all of her sisters and everybody and left Tina with her grandmother and made Tina feel like she wasn't good enough. She wasn't like the other kids. She wasn't good enough. Ike's experience was everybody left him. 
So when he met Tina, he told her, I, 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 everybody I help, I bring them up, they leave me. So what did Tina say? I'll never leave you. I, why? Because she knew what it felt like to be abandoned. Mm -hmm. So they both had abandonment issues. So there, that was the trauma that brought the bond between the two. All the things that he did, he never, ever, ever left until she realized that she had some issues that needed to be resolved. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until she got inside of Tina and learned what Tina needed, who Tina was, when she started practicing Name Yo Range Cure. Okay, yes. that was yes. her yes. becoming balanced and, yes. finding out, and finding that self-love that was necessary for Tina to discover who the real Tina was. Mm. Yes. yes. You know, the, the interesting about that is that we all have past, every single one of us. And like you were saying, Sherry, we all have those repeated cycles. Mm -hmm. And what the great majority of us do, we become victims and we blame everybody else mm. for victimizing us. Yeah. Because we've never really done the work and understood that. Wait a minute, time out. God keeps allowing me to go through these same cycles over and over and over with different people. Yeah. yeah. Not because I'm a victim, but because I haven't learned the lesson. What is it that I'm supposed to learn from this? Yes. I went through this with my daddy. I went through this with my first boyfriend, my second boyfriend, my first husband, all these other people we've had the same issues with. And we keep having the same issues and we blame them instead of saying, hold on, wait, time out. Let me get me. Mm -hmm. let, let me do the work. Let me understand why I keep dealing the same crap every day but different people. Why right. every relationship I get in, are they abusing me? Why is every relationship I get in, are they disrespecting me and calling me outside of my name? Why is every relationship I get in, are they cheating on me? You know what I mean? Or are they just kicking me to the curb for somebody younger or somebody prettier or whatever the case may be? Because we have to learn a lesson. And the lesson isn't about those other people. It's about us. What do we need to heal? But until we get to that point, we're going to keep going through those same cycles over and over again. Well, I, I know that, um, you know, speaking of God, you know, he, God wants the best version of you. Yes. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't put you in a box with anybody else. <clears throat> and, and we all know that if you started alone, you're going to end alone and you got to face alone. <laughs> so when are you going to, you know, you get into these traumatic situations from your childhood. And one thing that I've noticed with a lot of people is they hope that the new relationship brings on things that substitute the negativity that they came from. Because in reality, to fix yourself, you have to face your demons. Yes, sir. See, they're afraid of the results that may come from facing those demons because it's going to be somebody close to you. Yep. So how long are you going to sacrifice yourself to protect somebody else? That's right. Yeah. That's what you, and then, you know, and, and I'll have to use my kids a lot, you know, and I ask myself a lot of times, I'll just have those times with Randy and I'll say, you know, I have two daughters, beautiful girls. And I'm like, Lord, I don't want them to hope that they find a substitute for the things that I was doing wrong. Yes. So I need mm -hmm. to fix my wrongs while I still have them in my grasp. Yes. Now, yes. and let them see the change mm -hmm. in real time. Yes. And, you know, and, and that's what I try to tell young men. Face your demons. Mom, dad, grandma, whoever it was, friends, whoever it was, be strong enough to understand that you may have to stand alone for a little while. But if you do it the right way, the art of attraction is real. Yes. It's, it's real. And you'll bring in what you need to bring into your life if you do it the right way. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, I was just saying, something that, that really stood out to me is that you, when you are invalidated as a child, you begin to equate love with invalidation. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when, you, when you're abandoned as a child, you equate abandonment with love. And love in its purest form is patient, is kind is long suffering. So all of the things that love really embodies, you lose throughout all of these situations of abandonment. And something that um, Truth Coach Randy mentioned was um, the repetition compulsion. It's like having the same argument 
the mm-hmm. same fight, the same misunderstanding over and over and over. And you can't, and it never comes to a resolution mm-hmm. and you can't figure out why. And you're looking at the other person trying to figure out something in them. You need to do, look at yourself. I yeah. promise you start to look at yourself, things will be revealed and know that love. Um, there's something called the, the love hormone. And it's um, oxytocin. That's released when we have those warm and fuzzy feelings. Mm. And then when we attach abandonment or, or trauma, the cortisol hormone is released. So you're constantly in a cycle of oxytocin, cortisol, oxytocin, cortisol, love, abandonment. And your mm. brain, you're creating neural pathways that associate love now with all of these negative things when who we are at our core is, is passionate and love and kind and patience. And so it's just so interesting to hear how you were invalidated and how you had abandonment at such a young age and how the true nature of love was, was almost stolen from you and that you were able to discover that through, self, through self-awareness through later on. And mm-hmm. I just think that's, that's very profound and so many men um, should, should follow and listen to this guidance so that they can heal. Because us women, we are waiting to see that yeah. other side. We <laughs> yeah. I mean, with bated breath, we are waiting to see that other side. And the reward of it is you can't even imagine. You can't even yeah. imagine how many other lives will heal because of that. True. Yeah. It's, it's so true. Sorry, Elijah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying that, you know, it's sad because a lot of people, especially Black people, I'm going to speak for my own race, we look at therapy and going to get help as, oh, I ain't crazy. I ain't crazy. But the truth is, yes, we are. We all yeah. are. Okay, you know what I'm saying? We, we, all have, we all have a cross to bear. Every last one of us. I don't care who you are. Okay. It doesn't matter. We all have a cross to bear. We, we've all had something in our childhood to do. We all have. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is that the sooner that you get to admitting, because that's the first step to recovery, is admitting that there's even problems to solve. Yeah. And as soon as you can get to that step of admitting that, hey, is if everybody keeps to calling me a duck, maybe I'm a duck. Okay. Mm-hmm. I had a friend of mine, we were on a conversation the other day and we were talking about mental health. And she was saying about how her daughter and her husband and all her sisters and everybody kept telling her how the way she talks to people and how she's a control freak. So so I said, Well, Kathy, if you're hearing that from that many people, maybe that's something you need to take a look at. Because one or two people saying something about you, it could come from hate, envy, being pissed off, who knows. But yeah. when every every time you get into an argument and you keep hearing the same thing about yourself, it's time for you to take a look at that part of yourself. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes it yeah. is. And you know, it's crazy because, um, and I've shared this with Sherry, to Sherry before. As a man, I didn't realize that, and I don't think any of us really understand how our issues really affect us and how it affects other people. I grew, I was molested as a young man. Mm. And because I was molested, and as men, especially within the black community, this taboo, we ain't talking about this. This is off topic, off conversation. Don't ever bring it up. You know what I mean? Don't mm. ever bring it up in the black community because we ain't hearing that. You know what I mean? For whatever right. reason, as black men, you just don't have this conversation. You just don't talk about this. And so as a young man, I was molested. And I did understand that, man, I was with so many young women because in my mind, I was having these demons and I was struggling trying to prove my identity, trying to prove Mm -hmm. that I wasn't homosexual. And so the only way to prove that you're not homosexual is to sleep with women. And so Mm -hmm. I'm sleeping with all these women. They're like, oh, he's such a dog. He's this, 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 that. In reality, I was just damaged. I was broken. I was confused trying to prove that I'm the man. And there's right. so many young men that grow up. Again, I grew up in the 70s. Man, you don't talk about this stuff. You know, in the black community, Sherry has said something before. Um, we'll protect the predator before we mm-hmm. protect the kid. <laughs> <kids. laughs> <laughs> because we don't have no other yeah, yeah, prison. Talking about <laughs> to get arrested. Yeah, you <laughs> look here. Elijah, you touching on a whole nother show now. <laughs> yeah. You really are. <laughs> but, oh my God. But we, it needs but to be addressed, so, though. It's it true. It needs to. Yeah. yeah. And so as young men, we grew up, and even young women, I've, I've mentored so many young women who have been abused sexually. And this is their way of associating sex with love. And mm-hmm. so they're looking for it, and they're just throwing their body out there because that validates them. 
Yes. That makes them feel like there's some importance to them that, okay, you are valuable because we can have sex, you know? And so, man, we have to grow up and deal with our issues. Randy, did you have something you want to add to that? Man, no, uh, man, this is, it's a sensitive subject because I have a very close client that went through the same thing. And the question that um, I have for you is, she didn't know who to blame. She didn't know whether to blame the person that was allowed that 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 did the act or the one that opened the door. And I'm speaking in a literal sense. Yeah. Who did it or who allowed them to keep coming in? Right. You know, she she didn't want to be mad at mom. She she wanted to be mad at uncle, but mom kept opening the door for uncle. So. But mom wouldn't believe. And and that leads to what I was thinking about parenting and childhood trauma. My trauma came from not wanting to hear the child mm -hmm. because you're the child. I've been through it. But you're not going through what I'm going through. Yes. And I saw myself losing my, my daughter, my oldest, at an early age. I'm talking four or five years old. And people say, how do you do that? You pay attention to your kids, you'll see. And and upon talking to my wife, she said, the one thing you don't do is let her express herself. Listen to your child. So I said, you know what, let's talk. And she started telling me the things that I was doing that was pushing her away from me. And I said all that to say as parents, don't be afraid to listen to your children. Hey, they say out of the mouth of babes. Trust me, they have something inside that you need to hear. And yeah. it might just help you along your journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Along your journey. I didn't mean to get off track, but brother, I want to oh. ask you, I want to ask you that how did you address the predator or those that were around the predator that were allowing the predator to be that? So mine happened in church. And so I was mad at God. I was mad at my family. I was mad at everything. I was going to hell. You know what I mean? Because that's what they told me. And yeah. so um, I just grew up with this victim mentality for a long time. And mm. so God finally had to say, Elijah, you know you're not gay, right? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you know you're not gay. I was like, yeah, I know I'm not gay. And he was like, why do you keep doing what you're doing? I was like, what are you talking about? Why do you keep sleeping with all those women? You know you're not gay. Mm. Who are you trying to impress? Who are you trying to prove that to? And then once I came to that understanding, he was like, Psh. Man, I don't have to sleep with every woman just because she's willing. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't have to do this stuff anymore. But it was just a self-realization of, man, I'm not who these people said I was. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah, mm. true. Heal people. And that's powerful. Heal. And, that's and the, powerful. Reality, and the yeah. reality, all those people that hurt people, that hurt people, that young lady, and they're hurt. They're hurt. Yeah. You know, our parents, yeah. we can't talk to our parents because most of them, they've never healed. Yeah. Right. Well, so so when you start bringing this stuff up <laughs> to them, man, it's mm. triggering a whole bunch of stuff that they ain't ready to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, you stay in your lane, you stay, mind your business, and I'm going to do me over here, you know, and yeah. I'm going to go, you know, stay in your lane. And so they yeah. haven't healed. And so <laughs> you bring this stuff up to them, it's hurting them. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> It's funny because I know a lot of people thought when we said we're going to get on here and talk about relationships, they probably <laughs> didn't expect this type of conversation. But no. this is, what we are discussing is why relationships fail. You know oh, what I mean? Yes. So most mm. of y'all out there tuned into this conversation because you came here because you're probably in a broken relationship. Mm -hmm. But the broken relationship you need to take a look at is the one with self. Because oh, yeah. until that one is repaired, you're wasting your time with other people. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because a broken person is very codependent in nature. Very codependent. Mm -hmm. We have not healed our trauma, so we go out looking for those trauma bonds. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we, we bond to what we call karmic relationships. These mm -hmm. are people who came into our life to teach us what we need to learn. Those type of relationships are never fun. No. They are never fun no. because they trigger the hell out of us, okay? Oh, yeah. They're always pointing out to us what we need to fix, what's wrong, and it's triggering. We don't like to be triggered, okay? We like to stay in our place of comfort so that we can, you know, keep the blinders on and keep it sweeping the, the elephant in the room mm. under the carpet. Yeah. And that's what we've been doing for so many years. So I hope that we, if you came here today to watch this show, 
you really pay attention and learn that in order to have an effective romantic relationship with another person, it must start with you first. Mm -hmm. True. Learning to love yourself. Absolutely. Oh, yes, it's important. And we don't, and you know, the, the crazy part about it is that I wish we would heal before we start having children. Because we could, we, could, we could eliminate a lot of these problems. You know what I'm saying? I mean, even myself as a, as a young parent, I was married when I had my child and I thought I was doing everything right. But because I, I wasn't healed yet, I was passing down those same traumas mm. to my son. And then he turns around and passes those same traumas to his kids. It's, it's, a, it's a roller coaster of domino yes. effect. Mm -hmm. And so my thing is a prerequisite for having children should be healing first. Trauma okay? healing, right? Yeah. Healing in a yeah. child, absolutely. Because we don't have no idea the damage that we are doing to our children in the name of love. We will turn around and damage them and call it love. Ain't that some yes. shit? Isn't that well, something? We, keep, we call it generational curses. And see, the problem is by, by blaming it on a full generation, we don't realize that most of these generational curses are actually traumatic pass downs yes traumatic yes. pass downs that, yes <laughs> so who's yes. going to break the cycle and face the trauma that part that part that's that what part. we need to do face the trauma and then be an example for the next one yeah but what you brought yes. up was so and i want i want to really really i want us to take this away as the, the bulk of the conversation is something that truth coach randy brought up and it took me so long to realize how do you uh, have uh, what is it called self self realization? How how are you how are you able to see that in yourself that you're wounded and you have trauma? If you're blind, right, and a, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you're not mm. able to see um, your authentic self, if you're not able to see that you keep on doing these same patterns of behavior, some people never see. They you don't. know they, they can't see. So what so what can we do? What can the four of us do and other people that are trying to affect change in people's life do to help someone um, have some sort of accountability and, and realize what they're doing and in, in what they're going through? How do we help them realize that? Well, I, so like, to, I like to hear people's story, okay? okay. But I want to hear the, I want to hear, I don't want to hear the pretty rose petals. Go through the bad times. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't focus on the other party. I literally only focus on the storyteller. That's right. And because the storyteller is not doing one thing, asking their self, what is my role in this party? Yes. What is my role in this party? It's always you, 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 you. You, 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 yeah. You never ask yourself, what, okay, what, it, what can I do to stop this? Right. Now, if you do what you need to do to stop it and it still doesn't work, that's your card to get out. Right. I'm having them run you away and realize you got your hand on the doorknob. All you got to do is figure out which way the key goes. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, for me, it's the same thing. It's the same thing, like I said, when I talk to people, re accepting responsibility is the biggest thing. You mm -hmm. have to accept responsibility if you want to be happy. And I yes. always say to people, because a lot of people say, oh, I can't deal with you because you're too tough for me. You, you, you too. And I don't, because that's how I am. I don't, you've been living your whole life in a fantasy. Let's take off that stuff and let's look at the damage that you've done so we can clean this mess up and get you on the right track. So for me, it's like, I, you got to face it, sweetheart. You got to, um, I have an exercise I call the mirror exercise. I was just, and, yes, go ahead. <laughs> just the man in the mirror. Yes. I'm the man in America yes, in my head. Because, you have to yes, because okay. that was one of the ways that God also healed me. When I used to have I harbor so much bitterness and unforgiveness for people who had caused me pain, he had me to look in the mirror one day and say, instead of saying, okay, let's say, for instance, Bob disrespected me and I'm upset about it. So instead of looking in the mirror and ascertaining myself in the victim's club, talking about how Bob did me, I look in the mirror and I say, you know what, Sherry, I'm angry at you for ignoring the red flags that Bob was giving you and allowing him to disrespect you. Now I've taken back that responsibility. It's yeah. no longer about Bob because yeah. there are going to be a whole bunch of Bobs in my life. The yeah. question is, how am I going to handle the Bobs that show up? 
Am yes. I going to continue to be a pushover, a people pleaser, and you know, stay in my trauma because that's what I learned to do as a child to get attention. I started pleasing people and doing what mm. other people needed. So now that's what I'm doing in my relationships. And when it ain't working and when people take advantage of me, I got the nerve to be mad. Well, I can't be mad <laughs> because if I can yeah. stay from your plate, I cannot be mad if you eat it, okay? It's yeah. just mm. really, we as women, we do that a lot. We go into relationships. The first thing we start doing, we do everything but become a fucking ventriloquist for a man. <laughs> Okay, we look at me, I can cook, I can clean, I can save money, I can bend over backwards, I can put my leg behind my neck. I mean, we start going through all this stuff. But can you can you stand the pain though, ma'am? Okay? Yes, yes. Can you stand the pain? That's the question. It's like we know you can do all this wonderful stuff, but we got to remember who is the prize and we've lost that. We've lost mm. that self worth, that that first, that most important love, the greatest love you can ever have in your life is the one with self first. Mm -hmm. And until you have that, until you are completely in love with self, you need to stay as far away from relationships as possible because all you're going to do is check in to Heartbreak Hotel. And like mm -hmm. they said, you can check in, but you ain't going to never check out. Okay? <laughs> no, no, you know, no. the is, I think the great majority of us, we're really addicted to the trauma. Oh, yeah. We're addicted to the drama. You know, and so we knowingly get into toxic relationships. I've seen women that knew this guy was a bum, mm. knew he wasn't about nothing, saw him beating down his other girls. And for whatever reason in her twisted mind, she thought that she had what it took to change him. She yep. thought that she was going to put her stuff on him and he was going to change and become mm. this domesticated husband, treating her like she's a queen. And then when she started getting beat and cheated on and all that other stuff, it was like, whoa, it's me, and this ain't fair, and why are you doing this to me? It's like, no, you asked for this. Because when you really start loving yourself, man, you elevate. When you start loving mm -hmm. yourself, you become real picky about who you start choosing mm -hmm. to hang out with. Absolutely. When you really love yourself, you understand that, hey, you know what? I have healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. And when I have healthy boundaries, I'm not dealing with the drama. I'm not dealing with your trauma. I'll help you heal with it from a distance. But you not bring that other thing in my house, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. But because we don't love ourselves, we don't have healthy boundaries. Sure. And when we don't have healthy boundaries, we're just an open gate for anything and everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you how do you uh, teach self love? What are your coaching styles? Um, and I ask all three of you, what are your coaching styles for self love? Go ahead, well, me personally, I I personally. You you can't. I, I realize that I can't. I can't heal you. All I can do is put you in position to find what it is, and then give you the opportunity to make the conscious decision to want to face it. Because one thing I've come to realize is healing is not a comfortable place. And look at this. And look at it in a literal sense. Break your ankle. The breaking of the ankle is not the hard part. It's getting it back to right. <laughs> that's the uh -huh. hard part. So that, that's one thing I say. You, you said earlier, Elijah, people love to stay comfortable. Because there's nothing. They, they, it, that misery alone is better than that healing alone. Yes. Because at least someone is with you. Uh. So that's what I do. I actually, I, I I force people to go into their story, but I don't don't go into the story telling me what people did. Tell me from right. your perspective what happened from your perspective. That's how you're going to find out. That's how I found out why where my trauma was coming from. Yeah. I had to stop blaming mom and dad because you know one thing we have to realize is everybody doesn't know that they're doing it. Right. If it's right. not physical, if it's a if it's a truly emotional traumatic situation, they may not know. What if they're really doing their best? Yeah, what if they yes? And their best is just not enough for you. It yeah, might be right. great for your brother or your sister, but not for you. Not for you. So that's what I do. I actually have people go through their story through their perspective, and that's when we start to find the things that we need to implement change on. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that, okay. So you have them, so you have them tell their story and, and listen to what their story is, listen to their part in the story and yes. then affect change that way. But it has to be yes. something called self-efficacy where you yes. can't, and that's why you're a coach. 
you're not, uh, you know, because you want to, everyone else wants to fix it for you. Mm -hmm. Coaching, you have to fix it yourself. You exactly. have to come to the coach. You have to show up to the coaching sessions and you're putting the responsibility. It seems like a very common thread is responsibility for mm. you, your actions and for what you, for what your situation is in the circumstance. So yeah. I'll take that away. Okay. So your that's your approach. All right. <laughs> sure. Okay. So for me, I have a, um, I, I really, this was important to me in my practice after I saw how healing it was for myself to be able to see how I was my own worst enemy. That was so profound for me. It was my greatest aha moment, I think. So I wanted to see how can I, how can I help other people to get to this point? So I actually have um, a whole book and a, 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 a phrase that I trademarked and everything is called tease the pain away. And people go tease the pain away. What you mean tease? Well, tease stands for transform elevate and self-evaluate okay mm -hmm. so the, those that's how i teach people to get into that self-love you first have to transform away from your old ways and you mm -hmm. have to be willing to do that okay then you have to elevate your thoughts and your feelings about your life and about everything that you've ever thought everything has to you got to elevate how you feel you got to elevate those thoughts those feelings then you have to constantly self-evaluate because healing is not a destination it is a journey and as long as you have breath in your body you will be, continue to be healing so i think that the self-evaluation part is the most important part because if we can take that time out to get quiet to have that time when that's my meditation time my prayer time where i'm quiet and i'm listening to my higher self to be able to see, am I in line? Am I on the right track? Am I going in the direction that I want my life to go? Am I getting to my goals? And if not, what's stopping me? So the self-evaluation part is, is, the, is the ongoing process that you have to do to, to continue to massage your relationship with yourself. If you have a relationship with another person, you it's a constant work. You constantly got to be reminding that person of your how you feel about them, how you how loyal you are to them, and you have to do that same thing with yourself. So that's the self evaluation part for me: is you constantly staying cognizant of where your mind and your thoughts are, because as a man thinketh, so is he. So if we are starting to get into that negative nostalgia and start to look backwards and reminding ourselves of failures, pain, disappointments, then we are seriously uh, uh, putting trauma on our future, okay? So we want to make sure that that self-evaluation part is constantly being done. You want to self-evaluate yourself on a daily basis. And that's how you stay and maintain a good relationship with yourself. That's my, that's my way. So I like to tease the pain away and you are create your own narrative, become the narrative, the, the narrator of your story. Okay. I like yeah. that. These are good. Yeah. Tease I like that. Okay. <laughs> what I do is I just ask questions. And I, my thing is, you know, one of the things that God had to do with me is like, give me a different perspective. And it's like, so often most people don't really want to be healed. We just want somebody to validate our ignorance. We just want somebody to validate our victim mentality. We want somebody to join on the bandwagon with us. Like, yeah, that man ain't crap. And then when we suck, we'll be with the and your parents suck. And we just really want people just to jump on that wagon and become negative with us. And so what I like doing is asking the question, so what are you grateful about? What happened in your childhood? What happened in whatever you went through that you could say that you're grateful for? Is there anything out of all the hell that you've gone through, is there anything that you're grateful for? I know you said your dad sucked and your mom did this, your dad, da, da. is there a possibility, like Coach Randy was saying, that this is, and give them a different perspective. Yes. A perspective that they're not used to, because so many of us, we think that, man, we're so fixated that everything is this way. We have blinders. Mm -hmm. We can't see and hear anything because this is all we see right here. We see our pain. We see our trauma. We don't see all the great stuff that everybody else is doing. You know, and it's like, I was talking to a young lady a couple of days ago, her husband does all this stuff for her. She can't see that. She can't see all the stuff that he brings to the table because she's pissed off because of one thing. And that's all she's fixated on mm -hmm. is that negativity. And it's like, hold up, time out. I understand you're frustrated about this right here, 
But does this one thing right here invalidate all the good that he does? This one thing right here, does it override everything that he's bringing to the table? If it does, then okay, there's your answer. But so many of us, we're so selfish. And we have this narcissism and that we don't even really understand. It's all about me, 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 me. And never understand that they have pain too. They have trauma too. And we're all just trying to find our way. And so we become so judgmental. It's like, hold on, wait a minute. You're not perfect. If you're not perfect, your parents aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. Your parents aren't perfect. You know? And it's like, but we expect our parents to be perfect. And then it's like, okay, well, are your kids mad at too? Were you perfect raising your kids? Oh, you wasn't perfect. So if you wasn't perfect, how the hell do you expect to demand your parents to be perfect? And not even understanding the trauma and the drama that they were going through and that times was totally different back then. And they had their own issues and pain and suffering. But you want them to be perfect, even though you acknowledge that you're not perfect. And so when they sit there and they look at that double standard and that hypocrisy is like, oh, snap. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with us not being perfect. Right. But we can't expect and demand everybody else to be perfect. Right. When yeah. we're not. Yeah, that's so true. Um, so what I, and I'll say, so you, you ask questions in your, in your coaching style. And what I always do, the first thing is always to, you have to heal. This is something that I learned later on, but you get you don't heal from your trauma, it'll keep repeating itself. So the mm -hmm. first thing that I have uh, people do is to focus on the emotion and I have them write it down several times a day and as, put a reminder in their phone. And whatever emotion you're feeling, is it anxiety, is it fear, is it anger? Recognize that emotion and sit with it for a moment. Realize that that, that, that feeling is there for a reason. You're angry because something happened to you that was unjust, but now you have the option to let go of that feeling with love. You can look at yourself and, and let yourself heal from that trauma once you recognize what it is. And then this is something that I always say, activities, uh, people and purpose, but now I've changed it to healthy activities, healthy people and healthy purpose. When you're giving back, when you're doing this, when you're, when you're doing Habitat for Humanity or feeding people, when you're giving back in that way, it's so hard to feel sorry for yourself. It's so hard to live in that victim mentality when you're giving of yourself in that way. So if you mm -hmm. find that way to give back the activities of, of, of reaching out, inspiring people, um, the activity, and then the people, find a community. I think community is so important. And in mm. trauma, we often tend to isolate ourselves, you know, and then and that's when addiction comes in. That's when the yeah. enemy starts to fill your head with all that negativity. Don't isolate yourself. Yes. The light needs to be seen. If it's just a Facebook community, if it's a group chat that you do once a week, meet up with friends or coaching, find a community that supports you and then realign with your purpose. And we, we went over that earlier today on the video that we did before. Just find out what your purpose is and start to walk in that purpose and start to remind yourself of who you are and what you have to bring to the table. And, and all of the things that, that you all have said and then the information I provided, if you're able to compile all that and you can walk away and start to live your authentic self and to and to what I call a, a waking zombie. You don't have to be a waking zombie anymore. You can actually start to feel. So many people are numbing themselves. Ooh, they don't yeah. want to feel the pain. They don't want to. They want to just get rid. Just feel it for a second because it was there for a reason. Let it process through you, and then with love, uh, choose a different feeling. Choose a different path. You know what? I want to make a real good point. You you brought up so much good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. But the, one of the biggest points is this isolation and this coping mechanism thing. During COVID, alcohol sales tripled, okay? They tripled. And let me tell y'all why. Because you didn't have no choice but to look at the man in the mirror during COVID. You couldn't go outside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You were stuck with your partner. So if you didn't like your partner and you've been skipping out, not spending time to cope, you didn't, you couldn't do that during COVID. You okay. had, you were faced to face your traumas, okay? And people got into a lot of coping mechanisms, and we, again, as Black people, self medicate all the time because again, we haven't been taught how to deal with our emotions. So all we've not, all we've ever been taught to do with our emotions is to suppress them. So mm -hmm. how do we suppress them? We suppress them by not dealing with them, uh, not dealing with the effects that they bring in our life. 
um, drinking, uh, smoking weed, or whatever it is, crack, cocaine, meth, whatever your drug of choice is. The thing is, is that that coping mechanism thing has to stop because all you're doing is putting a Band-Aid on a problem, okay? And that Band-Aid is eventually going to not stick anymore. And all of these things that you've been covering up are going to ooze out. And then it's going to cause this tower moment in your life. And this is why we see so much stuff. If we would start dealing with our mental, we would stop seeing all these mass shootings. We would stop seeing all of these rapes. We would stop seeing all of this stuff that we see. These things are happening because these individuals have not dealt with their trauma. So yes. they're acting out right. in society. And all we keep doing is locking people up, thinking that's solid. And no, everybody needs a damn hug, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. You know, on is, now. sir, you brought up COVID, and it's crazy because not only did alcoholism and drugs increase, so did domestic violence. Yes, mm -hmm. it did. So did child abuse. Because yes. now everybody's stuck at home. And I don't even yeah. like these kids. And now like, I deal with them all day because they can't go outside and play. I don't even can't like this woman, but I can't go to work. And I'm stuck listening to her nag all day long. You know what yep. I mean? So we've got all these issues, especially within the Black community. Again, we pride ourselves on being tough. We pride mm -hmm. ourselves on having all of our stuff together. You know, what's up, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. You could be going through the worst of your life and people are like, I'm good. I'm good. You know, because we don't want people in our business because we've been taught as little kids. We're done in this house, stays in the house, keep everybody out your business. You know, so we don't talk about our issues. And so one of the things that I hope that we can begin doing, especially as a black community, is understanding that, man, I'm not weak. I'm not a punk because I'm talking about my mental health. You know, it is so devastating to hear, and like Miss America, to hear her parents say yes. that yes. they didn't even know that she had the issues that she had. They didn't even know that she was going through all that she was going through when she committed suicide. You know, I, I can't think of anything that could be more devastating as a parent, you mm -hmm. know, to see your kid commit suicide and to not even know that they had issues Right. Because you're so disconnected for whatever reason, you know, whether they don't trust you, whatever the case may be, man, we as a community, we have to start building that that ambiance where we can start trusting each other, start becoming transparent with each other and start having conversations. Because once we start talking like we're doing now, man, then I realize like like you're saying, Shana, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one dealing with this. Man, I'm not the only one that feel like, man, I didn't know you feel like this too, Sherry. Oh my God, for real. Right. You know what I mean? And so now we're able to react, we not react, but understand each other more. And we're not so judgmental because I think that you're acting like you all stuck up in sedity and in reality, you're hurt just like I am. Yes. And so now we can begin the process. Of, okay, man, how do we fix this? How do we move forward? Yes. Well, Beautiful. I know that substitution is not a option. No. You know, we... Um, have to realize that a lot of people that are, that I've dealt with that have gone through traumas, they feel like they can substitute something positive in order to erase the drama. It doesn't erase it. It does mask it for a moment. Right. You know, you can make all the money in the world, but the trauma doesn't leave. You can take her on all the lavish trips, but the trauma doesn't leave. Yes. And Elijah, you made a great point. And, and the pandemic was the best thing, period, for me. Yes, me too. Because I finally saw the distortion in the mirror. Yes. Yeah. See, everybody was bragging on all the things that I do to make my wife happy, what they see. Mm. But when we got locked in the room together and the nagging began, yes. I had to ask Randy at that point, why in the hell is this woman always on me? <laughs> what the hell am I doing wrong? I'm not even doing anything. <laughs> my, husband just just my, my husband just poked his head out the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is my thing. I need to fan myself, y'all. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and that's when I realized that Hell, the problem wasn't her. Yes. The problem was me. Yes. Yeah. 
It was me. She's not perfect, but I'm causing the issues in my household. Yes. And I tell people all the time, as a matter of fact, I had this conversation this morning. Don't get mad at what you accepted before you said I do. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, you want to change? <laughs> but you accepted it before you said I do. Right. Oh, you're getting what you bought into. Yes. Right. Right. Make wow. those decisions before you commit to the situation. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's what my wife had bought into, but she refused to accept it forever. Yeah. She looked me in my face and said, do you want me? You better work on yourself, buddy, or I'm going to leave. Simple point blank, no matter how happy I am, I deserve more than what you're giving me emotionally. Yes. More women need to be strong enough to understand that it's okay to, to walk up. away. Yes. 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 If it's not what you deserve. Yes. 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 Let's go yes. to the church. Yes. Hey, you know stop, what? stop listening. I watched um I watched the um uh, what was it I watched the other day? I watched uh, Michelle A's version of Death Row Records. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And the one thing that stuck out to me was the generations of women before her said, take whatever the hell that man do to you, and you mm -hmm. figure out what the hell you doing wrong. Right. That man taking care of you. So she allowed everybody to whoop her to sleep. Yeah. Can I ask y'all something? Because this is uh, now we get into the male female thing, okay? But I, I, I tell women this all the time, and they don't listen to me. But when I got y'all two men on the phone, I would just like for y'all to validate this because I say to the women all the time, "You got to." See, it, it it kills me how women's value just went down the drain. It went down the damn drain because we didn't value ourselves anymore. I be telling women all the time, if you want them to respect you, be able to walk away and don't care about losing him yeah. because they are so <laughs> afraid to do that. Like, I, you, we have, you got to, this is again where that self-love comes in because if you love yourself as a female, you're not going to tolerate anything other than what you feel you deserve. Okay, mm -hmm. a lot of women be out there talking about, oh, I'm a queen, I'm a queen, but you out there acting like a child. Okay, <laughs> how are you a queen doing these type of things? Okay, so I just want y'all men to validate that so many women are afraid to stand their ground with men. And I'm telling you that to me, that's when we get the most respect from y'all, when we are not afraid to lose you. Yeah, you know, what? and it's a trip that you bring that up, Sarah, because Guys would change if women had healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm, Guys would grow up and become real men if women stopped enabling them. If women I stopped so. saying, hey, you know, yeah, you could be a bum and just sleep on the couch all day long and play video games and not go to work and not take out the trash and not cook and not clean. Oh, you don't have to. I got you, baby. I got you. Dude. If women grew up and said, you know, I ain't dealing with this no more. And they said, you know what? In order to be here, you have to do this, this, and that. More guys would grow up. More guys would become more men. But because they don't have to now. They don't have to now because all they got to do is whisper sweet nothing in your ear, and you're going to let them stay with you, and they could have to, let you, you know, put it on you, la, 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 you know what I mean? Right. And, and then you're good now. You know what I mean? Oh, this is my boo. And you know he ain't crap. You know he cheating on you, but you keep accepting that. And then you get mad and start bashing, God, guys, oh shit, guys, all the right. Shit. But you keep Listen, letting them do it. Exactly. I had a brother. Well, he's not really my real brother, but somebody that we, like a brother to me. And he told me one time he had all these women, especially here in Atlanta, because in Atlanta it's bad. It's like 10, 15 beautiful, educated, got everything going for themselves, women to one man out here. Okay. Mm. So he told me. He had all these women. I used to just sit back and watch all these women just throw themselves at him. He told me one day, he said, sis, if I could get these one of these women to make me do anything, I would marry her tomorrow. <laughs> I love okay? it. These women was bending over backwards again, doing everything but becoming a ventriloquist for them, trying to prove what who they are, what they yes. bring to the table. When what they thought what women don't understand is if he approached you, he already know what you bring to the damn table. Yep. You ain't got to prove that. Now you got to prove to him that you are worthy of the respect that you're gonna be demanding. 
Because he already saw who you was. Men, what women don't understand is women got intuition, but men can look at a woman and read her like an open book without yeah. ever saying a word to her. He can look at her and say, oh, she needy. All I got to do is buy her a Big Mac and, and supersize that <laughs> shit, and I can get her to turn over tonight. Can, am I lying? No, you no, you right. Lying. No, true. I won't. I would like a women to realize that you're the prize. We we are the pursuers. Thank Period. you. Thank so, you. When you when you 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 are, we all have kids, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you have a child that has this one particular thing that they want, and it's expensive. You're going to give them some requirements before they get it. it. Yes. And when they get it. Yes. Yes. And you expect these requirements to be met. Period. That's right. what a woman is to the man. She is this expensive gift. She should have the requirements in place Absolutely. to stay in place. And if Absolutely. he can't meet those requirements, walk away. away. But you, Thank you. you I, I really period. like what you said. I really, really, because I want to make sure that um, that we don't we don't really blame the people because they're they're wounded. We have to help them realize that they are the prize. We have to help them realize within mm -hmm. themselves they have everything that they need. They are beautiful. So like I, I think it was Muhammad Ali that oh no I'm sorry. Um, Malcolm X that said the most disrespected woman in the world, the most mistreated woman in the world is the black woman. And so mm -hmm. if we started to it's not the woman that need that needs to accept more. It's you need to not not accept more, but to see that they are the prize. To see mm -hmm. that they to see you are a womb holder with you create life so we have to kind of change the narrative that we're just accepting whatever and heal the trauma that we've experienced these people you can't come to a queen with and not bring the, the proper gifts she doesn't see herself as a queen or she wouldn't put up with it she doesn't, <laughs> Absolutely. She doesn't see herself as a queen she doesn't she looks in the mirror and sees what society has said about us we're not in magazines you know, we're not on, we're not in music, we're not in movies unless we're fit into the European, the European stereotype standard of beauty. Mm. The, the mixed looking, the the different hair texture. Mm -hmm. We have not been told that we are the mitochondrial DNA creator of of, of life. You know, we're yeah. not been told we're the first Eve. We have to exactly. this is who we are. We don't know that and we lose that. And that's why you can allow a queen, allow a pauper in her bed. Yeah. Have you Absolutely. ever seen that? That is why you can do that because the women don't know they have forgotten who they are. They have forgotten their worth. And that's why they can mingle. You soar with eagles or you mingle with, you know, you mingle with bottom feeders. And that's why right. they're associating with those people. Yeah. Mm. And, and it's crazy because our culture, we've so demonized the women yeah. in our culture. You oh, know? Yeah. And, and to the point where I don't even listen to hip hop. I can't stand hip hop. I can't stand rap, any of that stuff. Because we've made women sexual objects. And we so invalidated them like, man, you know, if you don't dress like this, I ain't got time for you because she will. If you don't do this, do da 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 somebody else. Uh oh, he got frozen. Another woman will. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you don't want to act like a whole thing. They you froze. Do all this like, hey. uh -oh. Uh -oh. Somebody else will. I think it's frozen. Wait, I think you having daughters is really, is, mm -hmm. it softens you and it makes you so much more relatable to women because you're able to see like your daughters, because they have a father like you, you're the first person they ever fell in love with. That's oh, right. To look for that in other people. If these girls were taught that the, a healthy relate love is associated with abuse. Love is associated with with uh, with abandonment. Love is associated with just being a lazy person who want to get off his ass and do anything. You know what I mean? That's what love mm -hmm. is associated with. That's what they're gonna expect. You yeah. can't come to you can't come to your daughters with any foolishness. They couldn't oh, come. To, they called me unattainable Shana in high school. They, you, couldn't <laughs> come to, you couldn't come to me with none of that. And, yes. I, and I still had self-doubt within myself, but I knew that some little boy, a little boy on my bus when I was a kid, oh, I'll give you the world, girl. I was like, you're on the same bus as me. What world are you going to give me? You have to, <laughs> you know, you have to let them girls know. Let, put it in their head. Re reprogram their mind that, okay, you may yeah. not be on mainstream TV, but you're bad in yourself. Show them, show them positive, corrective promotion of dark-skinned Black women. 
And that mm. you start to see the effects change in these little girls where they won't accept anything less than the absolute best. But that always goes back to what we started talking about with the self-love, because when you, yes. you know, when I'm coaching these women who get caught really bad in these toxic relationships, I tell them to play the mother daughter role. Okay. What does that mean? So it's like, let's say I'm in a relationship with someone and I'm confused on a decision I need to make. Well, as a mother, you know, you're always going to give your child the very best advice, right? Okay, so if you're in a situation where your love or your emotions have blinded you to the truth, then place yourself in a mother-daughter role or, or father-son role and say, if I was the mother and this was my daughter's situation, what advice would I give her? And I guarantee you that advice will be totally different from what you were thinking of doing because you were emotionally bonded to this situation. But as you look at it from a love, self-love perspective, because a mother's love is like your own love, then you're going to see that situation totally different. And you will be able to make a better decision for yourself based on you loving yourself. That's just where all of us got lost yes. in this relationship thing because we lost our love for self. Yes. That's where it all starts. Because if we as women realized the power that we have, we wouldn't have the problems that we have. Yes. But we are literally out there giving ourselves away and wondering why the men, we have so many women who've never been married, oh, but yeah. they got a million and one sex parties. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I'm just saying it's something wrong with that. It's something it, it, wrong it, with that. Hey. Yo, so you true. as a woman, we have to remember that this is our body is our temple. Yes. It is the most precious jewel that God gave you. And it's not to be shared with every time they can marry. No. Literally. Now, that was no pun intended. That's hilarious. I ask, That's hilarious. I ask women all the time, what's more invaluable to you, 23 and a half, 23 hours and 30 minutes, or that five to 30 minutes that you might get? Mm. Mm. Why do they choose the five to 30? Because mm. they think it's going to turn into lifetime love. That's the yeah. weekend. They have a song called The Weekend. You're the you're his nine to five. I'm the weekend. And they'll really just, oh. <laughs> Yes. I you know don't even believe that song. Like, like these are women who are signed up to be the side chick. Signed up to be certified, the side chick. Certified side chick. Yes. Oh my God. And bragging about it. And bragging yeah. about it. Bragging and, about and it. That's why guys won't change. That's right. No, yeah. Steve exactly. Harvey. Steve Harvey made a great point like that on his show. He had a woman to stand up and she was talking about how she was dating this guy and he had this other woman, blah, 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 blah. And Steve Harvey made the greatest point to women that I just want to reiterate. He said, when y'all stop cheating with married men, we'll stop cheating. Yep. Okay? We mm. will stop cheating. Because if, it, if the women would get some morals about themselves and not accept being a side chick, not accept being uh, somebody's weekend girl, then if, if none of us was willing to do that, then men would not be able to cheat. Yes. They wouldn't you have know? anybody They wouldn't have nobody to cheat with. Yeah, you're right. They wouldn't have nobody to cheat with. But we as oh, women no, are willing to But now to they got to face that trauma that they're, that they're using to cheat. Yeah. That's because it. they're cheating yeah, because you. of trauma. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I want to point out something real quick, though. That's where fathers come in. At. That's where real fathers come in at. Because it's our role as fathers. We need to start teaching our daughters these things like Shane was talking about earlier. Because you know what? When you don't get these things in an early age, you're looking for it. We're talking about trauma bonding earlier. So when these yeah. young ladies don't get the love from their father, they got daddy issues and all this other stuff, first thing they do is hook up with some dude that's whispering in their ear, telling them how beautiful they are, how intelligent they are, and all this other stupid stuff that they daddy should have been telling them in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, but daddy wasn't in the picture or daddy was absent for whatever reason, emotionally, whatever. And so now these young ladies are growing up and they're looking for this daddy figure. And it's a crazy because I listen, I hear all these women calling they do daddy. And it's like, oh, you got issues, you know, <laughs> you got issues, yeah. you know. And it's like, but again, it comes back to fathers. We have to do a much better role. You know, and it's easy and we're quick to blame the women. Women should do this and women need to do this, women need to do this. But it starts with us as fathers because before they become women, they're young girls. And it's our job to prepare them as best as we can. And if we mm. don't prepare them, some dude on the street is going to prepare them they for some type of lifestyle. That part. That and part. That's the truth. That part. 
That's you know true. what? You know what, Elijah? <laughs> the, I, I, I used to think God was punishing me. Because you had girls. Me, because he gave me daughters. Yep. But you know what? He didn't punish me. He opened my eyes to how big of an asshole I was growing up. Ooh. Yes. By not respecting the prize. Yes. Because mm. I tell back and said, dude, he's like, no, son, I'm going to show you what you were doing wrong through yes. your own. And if you don't get it right, bro, I'm going to show you what hell really is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to show you what hell really is. And that is crazy. Yes. That men will allow their daughters to go wayward by not manning up to yourself, bro. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get and yourself you together to help your child out. Instead of, uh, if he do you wrong, I'm going to handle him. No, bro, handle yourself. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Because she's only dealing with you through yes. him. Trust. That's it. Yes. Speak on it. Speak on it. Don't get me started on that one. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Through. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and the trip is it's the same on the reverse side with women and their sons. Mm -hmm. Come on now. It's the same thing that I see so many young men that are young, young guys, they're not men. There's a difference. And I think one of the things we need to clarify, there's a difference between being a guy and a man. A man has no issues with having an emotional conversation. A man has no issue with being able to listen to your feelings and not victimize you, minimize you and invalidate you because you're talking about feelings. A guy, he ain't trying to hear all that. There's a difference. But I see so many young women that have sons and they hate the son's dad. They got issues with their daddy. And now this young boy is the mama's boy. And he's on his mama's shirt. And he has all these issues now, you know, because his dad ain't in the picture. And his mom is just, that's her lover now. Now, that, now, now that's the sad thing. But that happens. That literally happens where you have so many mothers, single mothers who have sons, who literally start to look at their son as their man. That's why you have, you have issues with mother-in-laws. Mm. You know, the woman comes in the picture now, she don't like nobody because really, <laughs> in the inside, she doesn't want him to have anybody but her. She just mm. wants it to be him and her. And yeah. that's a sad thing, but that happens because, again, that was a trauma bond that was yeah. also established. Yeah. yeah. And when you call a six-year-old the man of the house, there's an issue. There's an issue. Oh, I'm from out of home. He's, he's a kid. Let's let him be a dad. Okay. He's a kid. He's not a man of the wow. house. He's a kid. Yeah, I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. So what do you do when wow. somebody says he's just like his daddy? Well, they shouldn't say that, especially if you've been talking about how his poor daddy is. Because right. and, and, that, and, that, and that's my point right there. It yeah. seems like there will be an eye-opening moment to say, if I don't make a change right now, I'm going to continue to reciprocate the hell that I'm living in. Ooh, that's that's right. right. Through my son, from yeah. Through my son, and I'm a, I'm gonna have another young lady out there that's going through the same hell I'm going through right now. Right, it's Absolutely. accountability on both parts. It's on both on parts. Mothers, parts, mothers, on men, on women, on mm. on realizing what your imperfections are and not blaming and pointing the finger, but looking mm. at the person in the mirror and mm, doing right. the work. It's painful. <laughs> You're gonna be Easy. crying. All yeah, it's painful, but you have to do the work. Yes. And this brings us right back to healing before you have babies. Mm -hmm. Heal before you have babies. Okay. But you I, know, I'm so sorry. I, I like, agree with you. People. I agree with that healing, but I, yeah. I do have one thing. It I was married seven years before I had a child. Oh so it's not always possible because you don't really if I remember I had unnoticeable trauma. Yes. So I didn't realize I was. It was a traumatic situation until my seeds came into the world. Yes, I didn't heal until I didn't start this process until my son, my first son. Exactly, I and that's when I, I noticed got, it. Yes, me too. I was like, "There's something wrong with me." I'm like, "I'm yeah, I'm me." I'm like, "Why am I so mean to this kid?" Exactly. Like, What's happening at this kid? Little kid. But, but, but see, like, the good thing, the good thing about y'all are y'all have both y'all have both accepted that there was something wrong, but yes. that's not normal. That is yes. not the case. Most people have kids and they keep having kids and they keep traumatizing everybody. And yeah. they don't never wake up and realize that they're the problem or that they have a problem. And so I mean, it, fix it. sometimes your kids <laughs> can, sometimes your kids can lead to your healing. They can. 
But that yeah. again, because that is again coming from two responsible adults saying, yeah. "I wanted to be responsible for the pain that I was inflicting on people. I saw it, so I wanted to fix it." But how many people actually do that, y'all? Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I was a that's, single that, parent. That's very rare. Yeah, I was a single parent of two kids before I started the healing process. And what mm. was for me was my daughter is my oldest, and I came to California um, from the Air, in the Air Force. And I wanted to be a porn star. And I was like, sex, money? Man, that's that's the business. You know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> and that's what I wanted to get into. I'm serious. And I thought oh, I was wow. about to get to the world. I'm just being dead serious. I was twisted. I was messed up. And I looked at my daughter one day and I was like, you know what? My daughter and my son, that's my seed. They're gonna mm. be just like me. Mm. There's no way in the world that I'm gonna make these videos, these pornographic videos. And knowing my daughter, she's going to be at her friend's house one day, and they're going to pop in the video and be like, hey, ain't that your daddy? And it's like, there's as soon as I thought that, I was like, oh, hell. Okay. You know what I mean? But that, <laughs> just that thought of seeing my daughter, uh, my daughter seeing me, and so stupid video like that started the process of, oh, no, you got to change. Dude. You got to grow up. You know, look at how you're looking at women. It's okay to have sex and do all this other stuff. But now when you start thinking about your daughter doing those things, the guy's doing those things to your daughter, it's like it's a different story. It's like, oh, no, no, no. We reap karma on our kids, you know, by the actions that we make. Mm. Yeah. You know, one of the things that Randy said was that he, he didn't know that he was the problem. He didn't know he was the... And, you know, that happens for a lot of people, particularly people pleasers, okay? Like, I was a people pleaser, okay? I always was up, yeah. So as a, people pleaser, as a people pleaser, it becomes increasingly difficult to trace that you are the problem because you, mm -hmm. you, you see yourself always giving, always mm -hmm. you know, sacrificing your feelings for everybody else. And so how the hell could you be the problem? Okay, you you doing all the business. So how are you the problem when you know that you're a good person, you care about other people's feelings, you don't see yourself as the problem when that could be one of the biggest issues that we can have is when we're people pleasers because you should never mask who you are. You should never uh, hide behind your feelings to sacrifice somebody else's. You should never do that because when you do that, you're getting lost in someone else's version of you. Who are you for real when you're yeah. constantly doing what other people want you to do? So yeah. that's a problem all in itself. And so the, one of the things that, again, how do we know when we're having a problem? How do we know? Are you happy? Ask yourself. And, you know, this is, you know, that's one of the things I have in my self-love cards is self-evaluation questions to ask yourself. Where am I? Am I happy? Am I moving in the direction I want to be in? Is this so? Am I am I in line with my life goals? And that's how you can use that as a barometer to yes. find out where you are emotionally and be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you lie, just because everybody in your family says, "Oh, you and your husband and the kids, y'all got the perfect family," but you know you're miserable and can't yes. stand for him to touch you, right? Why are you still in that marriage? Because you, it's what everybody else wants you to have. It, it's what his family wants, what his mama wants, what your mama wants, but it's not what you want. Yeah. Right. So that's why it's very important for us to be honest with yes. who we are and also get in touch with who we are. Because y'all would be shocked at how many adults don't even know who they really are. Yes. They don't know what that's they right. like. They don't know what turns them on. They know what they don't like because we all know what we don't like. But what the hell do you do you like? Do you like? I think that the I, I love I, I love takeaways and what you said. Are you happy? Mm. Do you have joy? I don't you know, I don't expect you to be smiling at a funeral, but do you have joy unspeakable when you wake up in the morning and you're like, I'm happy and I don't know why. Right. Whether That's you can pay the bills or not, are you happy? There you go. When you have joy unspeakable, and so that so the question that you ask yourself when you are trying to uh, uh, excavate your your authentic self. Right? Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Yes. When you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, throughout your day, are you able to find things, joy and peace and gratitude? If you're not, and if you keep seeing these negative cycles continue and repeat, do the work. Do the work. There's something in your life that needs to be uprooted, that needs to be that needs to be addressed. Are you happy? That mm -hmm. is a question that you ask yourself, and that is in whatever 
the, the determination on that, the barometer, like you said, that's how you know what, where you need to start in your healing process. Yeah. Uh, Thank uh, you. Can I come in on that real quick? Yes. Because we just saw this real quote unquote power couple in our community go yeah. through this situation, out of an, an entanglement. The situation ship. Yeah, they went through this entanglement, entanglement yeah. because somebody wasn't happy. And I think this, there's a misconception in relationships to where we start looking for that other person to make us happy. And if yeah. this person isn't kissing our tail and making us happy, then they're the problem. You, you know what I mean? So I think that we, it, we have to be happy, but there has to be some joy. And that comes from within. Happiness is yeah. based on the circumstances. Yeah. That could change. You know, but right. are you satisfied with who you are? Are mm -hmm. you in love with who, forget the other person. Are you in love with who you are? Because it's not the other person's responsibility to make you happy. It's no, no, not no. the other person's responsibility to kiss your tail and, and to put you up on this pedestal because they could do all of that. But if you're not happy with you, it don't matter what they do. You still no. don't be miserable. You still don't be frustrated. They could buy you all, everything you want. You could be Louis Vuitton out, take you on any trip you want to go to. But if you're not content and satisfied and in love with you, yes. nothing the other person does is ever going to matter. And yes. you know what I call an entanglement? An orgy. That's <laughs> 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 the orgy. Because... <laughs> I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. <laughs> it's too much. I, I, but am I lying, though? You know what I'm saying? No. Like, let's let's, 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 let's no. take a look at this for a minute. It's the truth. You in, we all know what happens when you have sex with someone. Is you are having sex with everybody they don't have sex with, okay? So when you're in an entanglement, no one wins. No one wins, okay? Yeah, everybody thinks that they win it while they in it. But when it's over, you realize that wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, it, yeah. It's too much going on. You got you got two women chasing one man, or one man chase, or, or two men chasing one woman. Whatever yeah. it is, it's three people that have gotten into a triple trauma bond. Ooh, so triple trauma bond right there. That's what yes. it is. So yes. I know y'all laughing at me. No, but, <laughs> but no, it's true. It's true. It's, it's true. true. That's exactly what it is. You're taking all these energies and spirits and just tangling them all up together. Yeah, yeah. Playing hopscotch with spirits, just jumping for point. There's a man. And no one is gonna win in an entanglement. No one. Yeah. No one's gonna win there. Yes. Sherry. So yes. <laughs> man, <laughs> like Sherry is too much. <laughs> you no, know, I, I love this. I love this. This is great. We need to have more conversations like this. If we have five minutes, five minutes. Okay. The final words to the men, to the women of our communities. Um, what would you like to say to them? I would just like to say to everybody is to heal. You know, get find your find your find whatever method works for you. Don't be afraid to get you a therapist, a life coach, whether it's any one of us on here or whoever you choose, but get yourself together. Choose to take responsibility. As my beautiful Michael Jackson used to say, it's time to take a look at the man in the mirror. That's what I would like to say. Shana. Um, I would just like to say that we, we were provided with so much, like a, a well of knowledge. I felt like I just went to like a Harvard course with all this knowledge and wisdom and, and love and care. And I can see all of your hearts and the passion and the care that you have for, for your community and what you're doing. I want everyone to take away what, what Sherry said. Are you happy with yourself? Do you have joy unspeakable? If you do not have that joy unspeakable, then please Take time and take patience and start to do the work. Start to examine the things that make you feel this way. And I promise you, it's going to be painful. But if you have love and you have support from people like this, then you're, you'll be able to reach your full potential and you don't have to live in that pain. I've been there. You don't have to live that. You don't have to experience that every day. Free yourself. Free your mind. And let, and let yourself really experience true love. Beautiful. Coach? <laughs> well, I, 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 <laughs> well I, I, I want people to know that no one or no situation can fix you. 
you have to address those issues yourself. And then maybe the assistance will help you to enlighten yourself to become a better version of you. And I always leave everybody with the same thing. I always tell them, don't find comfort in those lies that you're living. Always seek freedom in your truth. Mm, That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Seek freedom in your truth. Me, man, (laughs) mental health is the most important thing. No matter what you do in life, it all begins with where you think, how you think how you process information. And so we got to get our mind rights. We spent years trying to get muscles, trying to get in shape, trying to look right, but we don't take that same time and put it into our emotional healing and to grow emotionally and spiritually. Sherry, Shana, Coach Randy, thank you for coming on with us. It was a pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much, guys. This is really, really beautiful and such a blessing for me. Thank you. Yes. Same here. Thank you, Coach Randy, for joining us. We appreciate your expertise, your knowledge, your your, your heartfelt confessions. You were amazing. Thank you so (laughs) much. Amazing. I thank you all. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you all. (laughs) Yes. Quickly. Hey, family. We're going to change the world. One person, one heart and one mind at a time. We have to be the bridge that takes people from their darkness, their pain, their trauma and ignorance to a place of peace, love, joy, and gratitude. Check out my website, ElijahAmi.com. I love you guys. Happy healing.